Our first speaker today is David Kunick, CEO of Pazoo. All right, so we'll get started. Uh, first off, thank you for having me, Derwin, today. I really do appreciate it. Um, and thank you for having me today. I just want to start off by saying that since we are a public company, I cannot disclose any non-public information in this webinar for the protection of your listeners so there can be no issue of trading in our stock on insider information. I'll try to be as specific as I can, but hope everyone understands we take our SEC obligations very seriously. With that said, um, I am the CEO and co-founder of Pazoo Incorporated. Uh, for Pazoo, we are a company focused on health, wellness, and safety. <clears throat> our focus is to provide best-in-class laboratory testing of cannabis and cannabinoids to protect consumers from impurities, contaminants, and other uh, irregularities. Um, in general, um, we don't grow marijuana, we don't sell marijuana, we test it to ensure that the end user has the safest product possible. So this is a really an exploding market in the testing lab sector, and there's really six main reasons that kind of make us different than our competitors overall. Um, first things first is that we have the partnership with the world's largest cannabis testing lab network, which is Steep Hill Labs. Steep Hill Labs has been around since 2008, and they do have the largest network all throughout the world. Secondly is best-in-class management team. As a lot of people have been doing their research on companies, this is a very dynamic industry when it comes to the marijuana sector. And with our management team, we have people that, have, that are part of the board that range from a medical background to a criminal justice background to an executive sales and marketing background. The third reason is the exclusive use of the Steep Hill Labs testing methodology. This is huge. They've been studying the cannabis plant since 2008. We have the first right of refusal to use their methodology all throughout the U.S. Out of Steepville's six locations, three of them are owned by or managed by Pazoo, which is huge. Once again, three out of six Steep Hill Labs locations are either owned by or run by Pazoo. Uh, this is a ground floor investment opportunity uh, due really to the early stage aggressive growth. Um, the company is moving forward. Um, from our uh, testing lab in Colorado to Vegas to soon be Oregon and more states. And we'll go over that in the near future. Um, as a lot of people have noticed, we actually just did a reverse split, which occurred yesterday, which has made a clean capital structure moving forward. And this is the best the capital structure the, uh, the company has ever had. And it's going to result in building real shareholder value. And throughout this presentation, you'll see how we are now, Pazoo is now operational, we're producing revenue, and we've really put the company in a great position for the shareholder to continue to build value. And as I already mentioned, we are operational revenues are coming in. And one other thing I just want to really kind of go over before we continue on is <clears throat> there have been some great reports that have come out recently. Um, Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, uh, came out with a report in December of 2015 talking about the test lab sector and how that's over an $800 million industry. Um, by the year 2020, and also Green Wave Advisors, which a lot of people are familiar with, has come up with a similar report saying by the year 2020 that the testing lab sector will be worth over an $850 million a year sector. And in general, when you look at the testing lab industry overall, 2015 was a, was a tough year for everyone for us, for our competitors, for everyone. This is a really tough year just because a lot of the rules and regulations were delayed getting to the growers and also getting delayed coming to the testing labs. But with reports like Bank of America and the Green Wave Advisors, they see the bigger picture and they know that mandatory testing is inevitable. So our management team, I'm just going to quickly go through it. Um, Steve Basil is the president and chairman of the board. His background is sales. Um, and marketing and on the high level, on the high executive level. Myself, I'm actually have a medical background. Um, Antonio Del, Del Hero has an economics background. Ben Hain has a criminal justice background and David Lieberthal actually has a legal background. So it really shows the diversity of the team. In terms of marijuana legalization, whether you're for or against marijuana, it's not going away. It's moving forward. And a lot of people have said the most lucrative part of the marijuana sector is the testing lab industry. Already with marijuana legalization, we've seen a reduction in crime. We've seen an increase in state revenue. And you've seen a reduction in law enforcement and administrative costs. 
then once again, what's really interesting in this sector is that you're now starting to see, especially on the East Coast and in the tri-state area, uh, hedge funds, private investors, VCs are now starting to look at the marijuana industry and saying, okay, that with the Bank of America Merit List Report, with the Green Wave Report, uh, the tri-state area and these large hedge funds and private investors are now starting to say, okay, this is Monday prohibition. We want to be part of this. So let's talk about Steep Hill real quick. Um, a lot of people always ask about our relationship with Steep Hill. First things first, Steep Hill is the leader in the testing lab sector. They've been doing this since 2008. They are mentioned in reports all the time. Steep Hill recently um, at the Canvas Money Show earlier this week was mentioned by about five or six different presenters about how they're really the industry leader. Something that we are very proud about is that we have a great relationship with Steep Hill, and Steep Hill is happy with us, which is why they agreed to give us the first right of refusal to open up a testing lab all throughout the U.S. Steep Hill has six labs, and once again, three of them are owned by or managed by Pazoo. People always ask me, well, David, how long is your contract for Steep Hill? A couple of years, maybe five years, six years, but our contract with them is for over 15 years. So we are with Steep Hill, and we are partnered with them as their official licensee for many years to come, and we're very happy about this relationship. So there's four pillars to Pazoo. What's really important is that all four of these pillars, all the revenue, revenues go up to the parent company, which is Pazoo Incorporated. And once again, our stock symbol is P-Z-O-O. So let's talk about the website real quick, Pazoo.com. People that have been following us for a while know that we have a health and wellness website. Um, which focused on health and wellness articles for people and for their pets. And this brought in a lot of new shareholders and has kept really many people engaged in our health and wellness content. Well, marijuana testing goes hand in hand in terms of health and wellness. Whether you're for it or against it, cannabis needs to be tested. And right now we are actually in the process of redesigning and rebranding our website. We really took the cannabis world by storm in Q1 of 2015. And Pazoo, we grew very quickly and while we have really grew in a very aggressive expansion phase, we still had a very loyal health and wellness online following. With the advancements we made in 2015 in the marijuana sector, we want to really show our main, audience, our main audience on the website on how we react. And we still want to really focus on the canvas side and the health and wellness side. So what we're doing now is we're redesigning a more user-friendly website that we're developing and, and implementing very soon. When it comes to Harris Lee and MA and Associates, those are our wholly owned subsidiary companies underneath Pazoo, which is the testing lab sector. As we continue on the next slides, you'll see um, a slide similar to this that will kind of show you what states that we're in and where we're currently going. What's very important to know is the following is that MA and Associates is based out of Nevada, and they will never leave Nevada. And we're doing business in Nevada as Steep Hill, Nevada. For Harris Lee, those are our testing labs outside the state of Nevada. Harris Lee will never go in Nevada. And for those testing labs, we're doing business as Steep Hill, Colorado, as well as Steep Hill, Oregon. For Cannabis King, uh, that's a company that was based out of demand that we, we formed uh, back in, I believe, July, August 2015, where we sell non-hemp products in the marijuana sector, such as antimicrobials, vaporizers, water conservation products, and more. However, though, uh, what we did was we took a step back in Q4, a little bit from Canvas King distribution, to really refocus all of our energy on the test labs, because that's where we really see exponential growth currently happening, and we expect this type of growth throughout this year as well as into 2015, as well as 2017. As time moves on, we'll really then refocus our efforts on Canvas King distribution. So let's go over our, our testing lab footprint. First things first, MA and Associates. Uh, which is based out of Nevada, doing business as Steep Hill, Nevada. We were the highest rated testing lab uh, out of every other lab that applied. We scored a 241 out of 250. Our next closest comparator was a 180. For M and Associates, we, we have several letters of intents for growers committed to test their products with us, but the size of these growers combined is over 150,000 square feet. Uh, in addition, one of these contracts is actually based for over two years. A lot of people ask me, well, why don't you list the names of the growers on your press releases? 
um, for these labs out in, uh, for these growers out in Las Vegas. And the reason why we don't mention the names on the press releases is, is that uh, the growers have actually, a actually asked us to hold off on it until we're 100% operational, as well as a lot of these growers are not utilizing the majority of their grow space. They're still kind of doing small little trial crops. So they're really waiting until they're fully ready to go and we're fully ready to go, and then uh, we'll be announcing the news and the names. Um, on top of that, too, Another great example is for Harris Lee. Um, for Harris Lee, we're based out of Colorado and Oregon. For Colorado, uh, the lab that we took over has been a revenue-generating lab for over two years. And we officially uh, are, took over the management of that lab roughly about uh, five weeks ago. A lot of people that have been following us, actually, we all thought we'd be taking over the lab back in October of 2015, but pretty much kind of due to the system, it actually only occurred about five weeks ago. But since that time, things have been amazing for us, and that'll be very evident uh, in a few upcoming slides. For Oregon, the space has been selected, and we're working with an architect, and we're making sure all our proper alliances are in place so we can quickly grow that facility out there. In general, uh, we're really about to begin the process of getting that facility moving forward in a big way to aggressively grow that revenue stream. By taking the extra time with Oregon, we have been able to learn and streamline the process due to our experiences in Las Vegas. And not only will Oregon become a major success soon, but Las Vegas as well will become a major revenue stream as we have shed some personnel and really streamlined the process out there. For the testing lab footprint, a lot of people always ask, well, where do you think Kazoo is going to be at the end of the year? Where do you think Kazoo is going to be towards the end of, of, of 2016? And what the people that have really followed us very closely know, we have that first right of refusal with Steep Hill. Six, three out of the six labs that Steep Hill currently have are either owned or managed by Kazoo. So right now we actually have several options on the table to expand. And the goal is to still to expand. However, before we do that, we want to make sure Las Vegas and Colorado are running full steam ahead. And the Oregon facility is moving forward accordingly. We also want to make sure that all the rules and regulations are set in place ahead of time before starting a build out. An example, in Las Vegas, we all thought the rules and regulations would be in place by April 2015, but that didn't occur until October 2015. That's seven months of waiting. On top of that, too, the growers out in Las Vegas are producing very little products. Um, I know one of our competitors out in Las Vegas, uh, Digipath, just released their revenue numbers, and the revenue numbers were very low. And that's because there's just not enough product to test right now because the growers are delaying their crops and really kind of waiting until Q3 to come out and have their crops fully developed. In addition, and for the states that we want to go into, um, some states want to incorporate testing, and they're starting their legislature for the current rules and regulations. And some of these rules and regulations are so tough, growers wouldn't even be able to pass any test at all. And really, in the grand scheme of things, looking at the big picture of the testing lab industry, the reason why we're so excited about Pazoo in 2016 is that uh, Matt Carnes of Green Wave Advisors recently said, Testing labs are already established in multiple states, but have a leg up on the competition. We are very fact that we have a pre-existing and we are now managing a revenue generating lab in Colorado. We're going to have a generating lab, a revenue generating lab in Vegas very soon. So the Pazoo lab operations, what are we doing right now? Once again, as a friendly reminder, we're partnered with Steep Hill Labs. We use their methodology. Three out of their six uh, labs are either owned by or run by Pazoo. This is also a ground floor investment opportunity due to our, expressive, our <clears throat> aggressive growth. And this is really shown by the Bank of America report as well as the Green Wave Advisors report. And as I already mentioned, we're now operational. We're generating revenue. With this upcoming year, we're operational, we're producing revenue. And with the reverse that we recently did, we've really put ourselves ourselves in a position to now build real shareholder value. So let's talk about Colorado. For Harris Lee, Colorado, doing business as Steep Hill, the state of Colorado certified Harris Lee, Colorado as the official management of Steep Hill, Colorado. This is something we're very excited about. This is the news that all of us were waiting to hear back in September, October of 2015, but we just got roughly five weeks ago. 
Well, during this holding period, we were actually developing an extensive sales plan and strategy plan. And the moment that we actually received the state approval, within the very first week, we actually got our first test assignment from one of the largest abstract companies in Colorado, and really, in general, one of the largest in the U.S. And the same abstract company was so excited about us working with Steve Hill and taking over management of that lab that they've actually assigned a large portion of their test assignments to us. In addition, when it comes to Harris City, Colorado, one of the things that we're very lucky about is we have a great testing lab team in Las Vegas. In Las Vegas, uh, they have to do what's called uh, microbial testing. And they're actually developing some of the update techniques here in Colorado. Well, they're actually working with their testing lab team in Nevada with this, because Nevada has the most stringent testing laws in the US. This just shows how the synergy works between labs and how we can really uh, put Kazoo on the map and having a great footprint in multiple states. And this just goes back to what Matt Carnes was just saying of Green Advisors about testing labs that are in multiple states will have a leg up on its competition. Another revenue stream which is going to occur in Harris City, Colorado is our uh, certification for CBD potency. Uh, we were just awarded that certification and that testing is going to start in a couple of weeks, which is a whole other added revenue stream for Pazoo, which gets us extremely excited. And with these uh, additional testing and with these new contracts, we actually uh, have been hiring additional personnel for the lab and technology staff. For Las Vegas, we're pretty much finishing and completing our final collaborations of all the certified tests required by the state of Nevada. Um, a lot of people uh, may or may not realize that originally when the rules and regulations were coming out for Nevada, they thought there would maybe only be about four tests required. Now there's over seven tests required. Um, we are <clears throat> adding additional staff uh, for the additional workflow as the growers that we have LOIs with and contracts with um, will be getting to start bringing the product in uh, Q3 to us. And on top of that, really our research and development that we're utilizing is, is actually going to improve the quality and the effectiveness of the canvas plant, which is going to bring in another significant revenue stream. Because what's going to happen is that we're going to be getting special assignments from growers to want to improve the quality of their crops. Also, we're going to have other companies in the canvas sector that are going to want research and development on their canvas product to improve the quality of it. As for Cannabis King distribution, um, as I already uh, mentioned before, we kind of took a step back from that in the middle of Q4 because we were growing so quickly in the testing lab sector and also because we're exponentially growing in that testing lab sector that we need to really put all our attention and focus um, really in uh, the testing lab sector. We've also uh, dropped a few products from our Cannabis distribution line for one reason or another. But in the meantime, what we're doing is as we are redoing and rebranding our web, redesigning and rebranding our website, we're also uh, in the process of redoing our social media pages as well as our e-commerce platform, where we'll be able to sell some of these products on our e-commerce platform, which is something we're very excited about overall. As I've said numerous times before, mandatory testing is inevitable. It is going to happen. Nevada has the most stringent testing laws in the country. And by us having a lab out in Nevada and to make sure that we are performing these tests at the highest level possible, we can also give this methodology to our other labs to make sure that we are having a uh, consistent quality every single time. It's also important to realize that Nevada is such a gold standard that the state of Oregon start to uh, adopt and start to utilize some of these same tests in their state as well, too. As for Colorado, Colorado originally didn't even require testing, and now it is, and they're making testing mandatory. So when we really first got into this Canvas state, a lot of places didn't really require testing. Now they are requiring testing and they were even requiring more testing, and they're adding additional tests from what was already previously required. I could go on and on and on and on and on and on about all, about how mandatory testing is, is inevitable. I can go on and on and on about the Bank of America report, about the Green Wave Advisors report, but everyone gets the big picture here. It is here to stay, and the testing lab sector is only going to keep growing. And in reality, there's a lot of states and a lot of products that don't require testing. 
this testing lab sector is truly in its infancy stage. So for the last slide, what, what are the top reasons really why you should take a serious look at Pazoo? First reason, once again, the partnership with Steep Hill Labs. They've been doing this for eight years. They have continually, every single year, keep developing their SOPs uh, to, be, to meet a new level of quality, as well as continually improving it. Our management team is extremely diverse. We're really looking at every different aspect, from the medical aspect, to the marketing aspect, to the legal aspect, to make sure that Pazoo can grow and really uh, continue to grow and expand throughout this year, next year, and many years to come. We are at the ground floor stage of opportunity. 2015, the testing lab sector took a, a tough hit, mainly because the rules and regulations were not in place. That is all behind us. Moving forward, everything is set in place. The proper plans are in place. And that's why with the recent reverse split, we truly are building great shareholder value now. With us being operational, with us producing revenue, we've really put the shareholders in, a, in the best place possible to really build quality shareholder value. And last but not least, <clears throat> we're operational. We're up and running. Uh, we, uh, one of our main competitors in Colorado is no longer there. We are constantly getting their business as their lab has shut down recently. With Las Vegas, our growers are, will be coming in and bringing in product in Q3. We're excited for that. And learning from our lessons in Vegas, we're able to also streamline our process for Oregon. And with our alliances that we're going to have out in Oregon, people always ask, well, what alliances are you talking about? Well, there are growers and manufacturers that we have contracts with and deals with out in Colorado and or Nevada. And they're also expanding their operations out in Oregon. And they're happy with us already and with our testing lab services. So we're going to be testing their products as well in Oregon. Well, thank you very much, everyone, for your time. Um, I believe my time to present is just about up. And now we're going to have some Q&A. So uh, you can take it away, Darren. First question, Signal Bay, they just moved their headquarters to Oregon, Bend, Oregon, I think it was. But one of their strategies is to have one or two testing facilities, and the other facilities are like collection facilities. They collect the product and then deliver it to their, testing, their, their other testing facilities. So what do you think about that strategy? Um, is results, would that take results longer? Uh, to get well, Dar Darren, I'm going to just cut you off right there. Um, every state has different rules and regulations. Okay, um, Some states, uh, some people want to have a grow and then have their own testing facility as well, too. You can't do that. Uh, the other thing is, too, is that when you're collecting samples, you cannot send them across state lines. It has to be within that state. All right? And for other states as well, too, you're required to actually have the state actually pick up the sample and deliver it. So it really depends on that state. Okay, gotcha. Uh, next question, C could you give us some color on the cost of uh, testing equipment? Sure, what we do is we actually lease our testing equipment. Um, we don't usually buy it. Uh, if, it's a, if it's a piece of equipment that's less than twenty or $25,000, we'll buy it. Um, in terms of uh, the larger piece of test equipment, we tend to lease it, um, and our leasing cost per month um, is usually less than $20,000 a month. Uh, next question, and I'm pretty sure you get this question a lot about your competition. You got DigiPath in, in Nevada, you got Signal Bay in, in Oregon, uh, so they're asking, I guess what you know. What makes you guys different, or what are some of your advantages to your competitors? Sure, and uh, this is a little bit of a long-winded answer because I get asked this all the time. Um, and it's a two-part answer because I am a medical guy. I have a medical guy answer, and then I have, as a CEO of the company, I have my my business side answer. As the medical guy, let's just take a look at this. In the testing lab industry, do we all pretty much use the same machines? Yeah, we do. In the testing lab industry, do we all pretty much use the same vendors? Yeah, we do. In the testing lab industry, do we, are we each of us responsible for developing our own standard operating procedures? Yes, they are. are okay. But now, let me ask you this. 
you're sick and you need medicine. Do you want to get medicine from a place that's only been around for a couple of years and is still developing their procedures and techniques to make sure they're getting you the best quality possible for your medicine? Or do you want to get the medicine that's been around for over seven years, has consistent results, and has continually year after year after year improve their quality and improve their SOPs? Personally, I'm going to go with the medicine that's been around longer and has proven to work. Now, as a business owner and as the CEO of the company beside me, let's just look at things objectively here, okay, for Pazoo and our competitors. Let's talk about Colorado. Our biggest competitor, Kane Labs in Colorado, which is 18 miles away from our testing facility, or roughly 18 miles, I should say, has shut down their facility due to citations. They're not there. Digipath has talked about possibly doing an expansion out in Colorado, and they got a provisional license. They haven't secured a building. They haven't started build out yet. And let's just look at ourselves. All we need was a transfer of management, and that took us an additional five months to get. So for the competition, Colorado, you know, we're really a leg up on our competitors. But now let's talk about Nevada. For Nevada, Can Labs is not in Nevada, right? The second part is that for Digipath, Digipath is up and running, right? And they recently released their revenues. And if you look at their, their revenues, it's not very significant. This goes back to what I was saying earlier, is that the growers out there are really waiting for until about Q3 to really optimize their entire growth space. A lot of the growers are utilizing very small growth space because they're still finding out uh, if their crop will uh, if their crop will, will pass uh, the standard the mandatory test or if it won't pass the mandatory test. Our own growers that we have our letters of intent and contracts with, they've told us point blank that hey guys, we're using less than five percent of our space right now. Because the rules for the for the level of pesticides and heavy metals and everything else that's required to pass was delayed to get, get into the growers by seven months. As for Oregon, really when it comes to Oregon is that, well, Can Labs isn't there, Digipath isn't there, and we're in the process of building our facility there. And the main reason why we've delayed uh, putting out our um, – for – for building our facility out in Oregon is due to the fact that we have a lot of alliances in Colorado and Nevada who are also expanding out in, in Oregon. So we want to make sure everything coincides together. So in general, look at the objective facts. We have a solid footprint in Colorado, Nevada, and soon be Oregon. Um, we're doing different things. We have the level of experience with the methodology. So that's kind of the way I really look at it in terms of, of the business side. Okay. Next question, and I think you touched on this. Uh, do you have any clients uh, in Las Vegas at this current point? Yes, we've actually had um, clients uh, that have uh, agreed to, to do testing with us um, several months ago. I, mean, that we, I, mean, I think those press releases were out six or seven months ago, actually. Um, as we have said uh, for Nevada, and as I, as I briefly mentioned that, a lot of growers um, are waiting for us to be fully operational as well as um, they're not utilizing their space. Um, they're using very, very little of it, and they're really waiting um, till Q3 to really utilize all their space and to really start the testing process. Okay. Uh, next question. Aren't you still developing as well since Nevada testing has not been required everywhere? Well, I mean, possible. I mean, what could be asked that? Yes, Nevada originally went from four tests to s over seven tests required, and a couple of those tests um, have required us to update the methodology for it um, to make sure it meets the state of Nevada requirements. Okay. Yeah, he clarified. He said, "Are the are you guys still developing?" your methods since Nevada testing hasn't been required everywhere? Every testing lab in Nevada is making sure that their methodology meets the state requirements. And that, what the beauty of that is, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, is that a great example is microbial testing. We've already developed that. The methodology is already done. It's already taken care of in Nevada. And now um, we're, they're now requiring that out in 
Colorado. And now our heads, uh, our lab director in Colorado is working with our lab director in Nevada because we implement the same methodology. So that's kind of nice. We have the synergy being in multiple states where the labs can work with one another, and especially being in Nevada, which has the most stringent testing, it really allows us as we continue to grow into, into other states, we'll have that nice flagship lab in Nevada. Okay. Our next question, you mentioned Nevada and Oregon. Do you have any plans on scaling or expanding to other states like Washington, Alaska, California, and maybe outside the states, uh, Camp Canada? I touched on this a little bit earlier. It's a great question. Um, once again, I can't say specific states because that's not public information. Um, the one thing that we really learned in 2015 is that all the rules and regulations that need to be put in place ahead of time. Opening up the test time is not that tough. It's make sure the rules and regulations are in place. Nevada, we all thought the rules and regulations were going to be given out by April of 2015. They weren't given out till October of 2015. That's a seven-month waiting period. Okay. For Colorado, um, they just started to implement mandatory testing. And then even to get that transfer of management, that took an extra five months for us to get. So before we go into any other state outside of Oregon, Colorado, or Nevada, we want to make sure the rules and regulations are in place. One great example is uh, Maryland. Um, Maryland has some rules and regulations in place, but the rules that they uh, administer, there's no way any grower is going to pass any of the tests. Um, that's something that me and actually uh, Provory Labs have actually, actually talked about together about how tough the testing laws are in Maryland and how that, and how that legislature needs to change. Um, so that's why we want to make sure everything is in place ahead of time. And plus also, too, we don't want a repeat of 2015. 2015 is in the past. We're moving forward with everything and, and we're producing revenue, revenue now and we're operational now. And we want to make sure we, we're taking care of our shareholders. Okay. Next question, David. Now that Pazoo has done a, a reverse stock split, uh, do you plan on issuing any shares in the future, new shares? Uh, in, in issuing new shares, no, we're not. Um, we did not increase our authorized at all. We left our authorized as is. Um, a lot of people also ask, too, uh, why did you do the reverse now? Why now? Um, and the reason why we did it now is due to the fact that we're now producing revenue. We're now operational. We are now uh, building real shareholder value for our shareholders. We are now at that level where we can tell the public and say, yes, we're making, we're making money now. Uh, we're signing up clients. We're moving things to that next level. Okay. Well, speaking of revenues, could you could you possibly give us a, a breakdown of revenues? Where do you think they're going to come from? You know, is it Nevada? Is it you know Oregon? Uh, you know, could you kind of give us some color on that? Sure. Um, when it comes to the exact revenue numbers, it's it's the same answer I tell everyone. We'll announce exact revenue numbers in our filings as well as in press releases, so the public knows all at the same exact time. Um, in terms of where the revenue comes from. Um, the revenue comes uh, from our testing, um, from our testing lab currently in Colorado, um, from, it, from our testing lab in Nevada, and soon to be from the testing lab in Oregon. And the revenue actually comes from the grower themselves, because the grower pays us directly to do the testing for them. And in Nevada, every five pounds that's grown by the grower is required to be tested. How much of a market share do you feel Pazoo is capable of grabbing in the MJ testing sector? Uh, that's a great question. It's a very loaded question. Um, what, I always, what I usually tell people for that is there's plenty of fish in the sea, so why can't we all be successful together? No one's going to have more than 50, 60, 70 percent of the market share. What is going to be a huge difference for us is that we're in multiple states. And that's why I loved when Greenwave Advisors said, hey, uh, companies that have testing labs in multiple states have a leg up on this competition. Um, 
We feel very confidently it will definitely be in the double digits for percentage lies uh, for the amount of market share. But as I mentioned before, no one's going to have more than 50 or 60 percent of the market share. Next question, David. What are the majority of your operating ex expenses are specifically? And what do you do with excess assets of nearly $2 million? Well, um, I'll answer the first part because um, I can touch on that. The second part, um, I really can't. Um, but the, for the first part, pretty much the majority of our operating expenses really comes down to the testing lab equipment. Um, that's our, our number one um, operating expense. Um, and the second operating expense is payroll for the employees, because you have a lab director, you'll have a, a microbiologist, uh, depending on how busy you are, you might have two or three chemists, and if you're extremely busy, you might have seven or eight lab techs, and that can add up. Next question, how many full-time employees do you have now, and how many more do you expect by year end? If you were to look at Pazoo Corporates, um, Nevada, Oregon, and Colorado, you're looking around over 15 full-time employees. And <clears throat> by year end, that number could potentially reach up to about 40 or 45 full-time employees. One thing to also consider, which I, I don't think I mentioned before, is we're growing very quickly and exponentially in Colorado. And something that I mentioned in, um, on Money TV um, a couple of months ago is that as we increase the demand in, uh, or we, as we increase our revenues in Colorado, we're actually already looking at another building to expand our space and to expand our operations, which is a good problem to have. Uh, next question, do you currently have uh, long-term investors uh, invested in the stock and uh, and didn't have any any long-term or institutional investors contacted you recently regarding interest in Pazoo? Sure, and a great question. So the first part is, I, I hope every shareholder is a long-term investor. This is going to be over an $800 million a year uh, sector in the marijuana industry. Uh, this is going to, testing is not going away. This is going to keep growing and growing and growing. So this is a, really a perfect time for someone to take a look at us and what we're doing. Um, in terms of some of the other investors that we actually already have, yes. Uh, um, literally every investor, every private investor that we have is looking at, at, at this as a long-term play because they know um, <clears throat> where the industry is going. Another factor, which a lot of people forget, is our corporate office is actually in New Jersey, um, and we're actually, which we did a press release about this, we're actually uh, going to be uh, moving offices um, within the next week um, to actually expand our operations. Uh, but with that being said, that being in New Jersey, we're in the far more suitable of the U.S. We're by GlaxoSmithKline, Novartis, Johnson & Johnson, Merck, so forth and so on, where we get looked at by a lot of pharmaceutical companies. They know what we're doing. Uh, being in New Jersey and being very friendly with pharmaceutical people, you know, those are some of the people that actually love what Pazoo is doing and love this testing lab sector. In terms of more institutional investors, um, yes, we, ever since we took over the management of Colorado, we are getting a lot more eyes on us and, we're, and we are talking to a lot more people. On top of that, the Bank of America Merrill Lynch report about the testing lab sector was phenomenal for us, as well as the Greenwave Advisors report. <clears throat> and a funny story that I like telling people is there's a, uh, an institutional investment company, which I won't say which one, in New York City, um, that asked us to do a meeting, or we asked to meet with them a little over a year ago. They laughed us out of their office. They said, this testing lab sector is not going anywhere. It's not doing anything. Well, Greenwood Advisory Report comes out. Bank of America Report comes out. And we announced us taking management of Colorado. All of a sudden, this same uh, institutional, um, this institutional uh, financing 
uh, place now called us back literally four weeks ago and said, hey, we want to set up a meeting. We're now seriously considered, uh, we're now seriously looking at you and considering what you're doing. This sector is going to boom. So it's been phenomenal and we're so excited about 2016, which is another reason why we did uh, the reverse of time that we did to, because with the producer of the revenues being operational, it's a perfect time to build the shareholder value. Uh, one of the, the audience members wants you to go back, I think it was slide two, where you had your staff of consultants and partners. You so mean you our board directors? Back on your deck to that slide. Mm. You mean our, uh, our management team? Well, it says here uh, you, your staff of consultants slash partners. There you go. And, mm -hmm. Yeah. That's it. Uh, next question. Uh, going forward, how do you plan on funding the company? Uh, going forward, we plan on funding the company through institutional investors and direct private investors in the company. Yep. And, 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 I'll, and, and I'll take it a, another step further for you, Derwin. A lot of people are really trying to ask, are you taking more convertible debt? Is that what you're going to do? None of us ever wanted to take convertible debt ever. The problem is, is that in 2015, with the delays, the rules and regulations coming out, private investors and institutional investors, a lot of them said, okay, well, have this industry get a little bit more mature. Let's see what happens. And in Q4, as we progress to things, and already in Q1, that's where we're getting a lot of private investors and as well as institutional investors. And the last question, going forward, how do you – plan on gaining shareholders and, and future investors' confidence? Simple, very simple answer. Producing revenues. That's it. We're operational now. We went from a developmental stage company in 2015 to now a growth stage company here in 2016 and a revenue generating company here in Q1 of 2016. Every shareholder that's already been with us thought this would happen in Q3 or Q4 of last year. It took seven months for Nevada to give <clears throat> the rules and regs and finalize everything. And that's the lay the product and the growers. That's why I mentioned DigiPass revenues. There's not product out there to test right now. As much as people are want Vegas to keep moving forward, there's not enough product to test right now. That's not happening until Q3. For Colorado, everyone thought that the management would be taken over by, uh, by Pazoo in October, November, but it didn't occur until literally five weeks ago. So that's how we're going to gain share, shareholder uh, confidence moving forward. And uh, we've got a couple of more questions, but we probably can only take one more. Any questions that we do not answer, I'll email to David, and uh, he'll respond via email. Uh, the next question here is, do you think eventually all states and when it becomes federally legal, uh, will the government, this all states and the government eventually will require testing? Two-part answer. The number one positive thing about the testing lab sector is if legalization never occurs, it doesn't affect us. It does not affect our revenues. It does not affect what we're doing. That is one of the biggest things people need to realize is that if it never goes legal, we're still okay. Testing is still going to be mandatory. Now, if it does become legal and the federal government does uh, say, okay, we'll pass it in all 50 states, it's still, it's still being held in the private sector. This, uh, the government has already been, uh, the government has already been uh, telling each state you're responsible for the marijuana sector in itself. That's why those are not prosecuting unless you go across state lines. They're letting everything stay within the state. But once again, if legalization never occurs, the test lab sector isn't affected. It's still going to expand. With the 23 states right now, 23 plus states have medical marijuana laws, several of them are already, as I mentioned earlier, implementing new testing laws. And they're going to have those testing laws. So testing become mandatory in more and more states because at the end of the day, it's a drug. It needs to be tested. And Nevada is a great example. They were dealing with from only having four tests to now over seven tests. They're realizing the importance to make sure that the end user when they receive their medicine, they are putting the safest product in their body possible. 
Well, we, we have a couple of more questions, but I'll email those questions to you, David, and uh, you can email uh, the audience members that submitted those questions directly. Uh, but that concludes our presentation. Any last comments uh, regarding uh, Pazoo, David? Um, I just want to say thank you for having me. We're extremely excited about this dynamic year in 2016. Um, we're extremely excited to continue to have more exponential growth all throughout this year and also to 2017. And um, we welcome everyone to come along and join us for the ride because it's going to be a great year. Well, thank you, David. Uh, we really appreciate your support of the Cannabis Investor webcast. And hopefully you'll come on in another three months and give us an update. So thank you. Thank you very much for having me. You have a great day today.